in his glorified body. This is not in the sermon, of course, but uh, you see, in his glorified body, he still carries the scars of the crucifixion. And he sits right there at the right hand of God. And every time God looks over at him, he says, you know, I remember my covenant because Jesus was the perfect sacrificial lamb. There was no impurity in him at all. He was pure. His blood was pure. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of theologians, so to speak, who, who think they know something about the Bible, and they say, well, the, the virgin birth was really not true. That's just a story. Yeah. Well, they're lying to you. Because the, the virgin birth was absolutely <coughs> paramount of importance. You see, Jesus has the blood of God pure flowing through his veins or he did and he poured that out on the Hasid seat in heaven we, we give that a, a weak terminology in our English called the mercy seat but mercy is a weak word compared to what it really is it's God's unending devotion to you it's the fact and I know you've heard me say it and you'll probably hear me say it a bunch more but it's God's fact that when, when God says uh, put him in remembrance, he's saying, you're at the forefront of my mind. It's not that I have to remember you, it's that I can't forget you. You are just always there. That's why when it says God's mercies are new every morning, God's Hasid is new every morning because God is Hasid. It's not something he has, it's who he is. And if you don't know what Hasid is, You'll just have to learn Hebrew and go look it up. Because it can't be translated actually in English. It's so powerful. It's God's unending, ever caring, never failing, unconditional love, desire to get to you, everything that He can possibly get to you. He paid He made the great exchange to give you everything that He has and took everything that you don't have which was filthy rags. Hasid. <laughs> what was we going to preach on today, God? I don't know. I tell you, our government is good. Because you're in line with what he has to say. 
Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. The NIV version says, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. Watch. The word is watch. That word is synonymous actually with prayer. Watch and pray. Be vigilant. Be on guard. Be spiritually alert. Be attentive to the things that are happening around you. Watch. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you give us your word for instruction. And because you give us your word, Lord, we are pruned. We are cleaned, Lord. We learn about you. And Lord, as we press into you, as we become more like you, Father, as we learn more about your covenant, as we learn more about the great exchange, Lord, we see that you have great things in store for us. You have things you want us to be about doing. Father, forgive us for living so far beneath the covenant that you paid for. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. The Lord, we're, we're a people asking for revelation. We're a people asking for wisdom. And Lord, you tell us if we ask, you'll give it to us. So thank you, Lord. We receive wisdom and revelation from you. And we will apply it to our lives. We'll be like the man who built his house on a sure foundation. Because when the storms of this life do come, we will stand because of you. Father, we are watching. We are vigilant. We are steadfast. We are spiritually alert. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Watch. Be steadfast in the faith. Be brave. It's the only time in the New Testament that is actually used there in the Greek. And in modern day vernacular, it would be man up. You now, quit being a boy and be a man. That's what actually that word is saying. Do what you're supposed to do. Be strong. You see, Paul started writing the book of Corinthians. We're here in the 16th chapter, which is the last chapter. And he started it out, and he was saying... Uh, I was going to write to you about all the deep things of God, but here you are arguing among yourselves. You're acting like a bunch of little kids, and so now I've got to back up and rewrite to you what I've already taught you. I've got to tell you the same thing over again and waste my time. That's what that beloved Apostle Paul was saying to the Corinthians here. But it's kind of like everything else. You know, somebody will get up here and speak for 30 minutes, and then they'll say in the last two minutes, well, this is what I really want to get to. And I do that all the time. I know I do. But that's kind of what he was doing here. He wrote the whole letter. Then he finally got to what he wanted to say, and that was watch. Be vigilant. Let's look at Matthew 26, 38. You're going to be flipping a little bit in your... Bible today, so just be prepared. Um, this is Jesus talking here. He said, Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, the one that or even just saying about it. Nevertheless, God, not as I will, but as your as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He came to the church and found them sleeping. And said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Paul talks about in the book of Romans, chapter 7 and 8 there, that 
I have this desire on the inside of me. I have this spirit inside of me that really wants to get after the things of God. But then I also find this other thing dragging me down, this flesh. And I have to war against it all the time. I have to war against it. He says, I want to do this for God, but then I don't do it. And I don't want to do this thing because I don't want to bring shame on God, and then I do it. He said, it's a war. But the way you succeed is to watch and pray. He said, you have to pray. You have to spend time with God. You have to spend time in His Word. There's, uh, there's two words that are usually together, or well, they kind of run hand in hand together in the Bible a lot. Sin and iniquity. <clears throat> well, sin is an archery term. It means to miss the mark. And then the other word, iniquity. Iniquity means to have a bent towards something. Now, a lot of people say, well, I just can't help it. I was born that way. Uh, I was born a certain way, and I have this tendency about me. And that very well may be true. We're all born sinners. We all have a bent towards sin. Some people have a, a problem with depression. Some people have a problem with being negative. It doesn't matter what you say to them, they have a negative comment. Some people have a problem with anger. People have a different bent. But what the Word tells us is, is that if we will watch and pray, that we can actually avoid those problems. 1 Peter 5, 8. I'm just going to move right on, but uh, you can get there if you can. 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Same word translated watch. Be sober, be watchful, because your adversary, the devil, you do have an adversary. He's the devil. Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, Knowing that, you're, knowing that your brothers around the world face the same type of issues. You see, the devil looks for somebody who is vulnerable. And what makes you susceptible to things is that you do not know the covenant. If you know the covenant and know to resist him, know that you stay in the word and you get washed by the word, then the devil cannot do anything to you. What Jesus is saying here is if you'll be praying, watching and praying, it'll make you strong. In the prayer where the disciples asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Our Father, our Father, how... sorry, I want to get to my line. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When it gets to the poor part where it says, Lead us not into temptation. That's a bad translation. That's how King James translated it, but it's a bad translation. Actually, um, the literal Greek there is lead us around temptation. Because the Bible says in James that God does not tempt man. So why would you pray that God doesn't lead you into temptation? Because he doesn't. It's lead us around temptation. I'll give you an example. April and I arrived into the church this morning. And she's over there saying something. This is a hypothetical example. This is not real. Okay. Um, she says something. And a voice inside of me says, You always say that. And so I say, You always say that. And then she pipes back at me. And then I pipe back at her. Then she piped back at me. You see, that temptation came. That snare came.